Welcome to another Digital Corona lesson. This time we want to have a look at the industrialization in the United States of America, where it all began. Um, before we can do that, we need to have a look at something which is called locational factors. Now, locational factors are the reasons why somebody builds a factory where they build it. Locational factors are the reasons why certain businesses start in certain locations. Um, the obvious locational factors are, for example, space. If you want to start a business, a factory, you want some space to build your factory on. Apart from that, you will need energy to run your machines. You will need raw materials which you can process in your factory. Most importantly, you will need people. People as workers and people as consumers to buy the products that you are making in your factory. Eventually, you will also need transportation infrastructure to get the products to the places that you want them to go to. In terms of locational factors for heavy industry like automobile and truck production, shipyards and anything that is related to steel and iron, the Great Lakes area is the perfect place because you have huge waterways which serve for transport. There are many cities and the raw materials that are necessary for steel production are available as well. There is iron ore in the northwestern part of Lake Superior and there is coal along the Appalachian Mountains in this area. One of the most prominent cities is Pittsburgh for coal production. So if you can produce the iron ore here, you can transport it via ships to the industrial area at the southern tips of the Great Lakes where the coal is available readily and uh, can be used for smelting of iron ore into steel. This is the ore. It looks like dirt, but in a few weeks it'll become part of a ship, a tank, or a gun. In the blast furnace, the boys smelt the ore into iron, the first step in making steel. The molten iron comes out at 3,300 degrees. This is the open hearth where the molten iron from the blast furnace is mixed with scrap iron and the two purified into steel. This iron is fresh from the blast furnace. rough, but these rollers squeeze the ingots down to a tolerance of a sixteenth of an inch. Each roller operates at a different speed, synchronized to handle a slab that's growing longer and thinner and moving faster all the way down the line. This is it. Steel. Only a few hours ago it was iron ore. Now it's finished and on its way to become a part of the new world it's building. This is the famous Saturday bath, 1957 style. And this is the time when a new Chevrolet owner really feels great that he bought a Chevy. American cars were big and they were made of steel, a lot of steel. And they were powerful. So American cars set the standard for automobile technology with powerful engines, automatic transmissions, power steering, power brakes electric everything. So the whole world was looking up to American motor standards. There's a new era 
in automobiles. It's the new Motoramic Chevrolet. What's new? Everything. This new design provides great new strength, rigidity, and roominess. New four fender visibility with the big new sweep side windshield and total glass area increased more than 18%. A revolutionary new ride plus new power. The new Chevrolet Turbo Fire V8 engine and two new Blue Flame Sixes. It's the new Motoramic Chevrolet. American cars weren't only special in the way they were built and designed, but also in the way they were produced in the factories. To supply the conveniences for modern living, the products we create and build grow ever more complex. Today's automobile, for example, may call for as many as 14,000 parts. No one plant or single factory can make all the many kinds of parts. It takes thousands of separate suppliers. And in every supplier plant, each man and woman must work with a feeling of responsibility toward the eventual owner of what it is he's helping to make. All the many parts, accessories, and special equipment must meet at their rendezvous. The call is for individual choices for custom service on a mass production basis. And the response must be a fine accomplishment of meeting individual needs and personal tastes in terms of millions of individuals. Giant teams of working people all fitting together. Most importantly, there are very many big cities in the area where there's a large pool of people um, first as workers and second as consumers and the great advantage is that if people have work they have a steady income and they're willing to spend that income on the products that are being produced in the area so everybody wanted to have a car for example in the course of time new materials were developed and aluminum replaced steel plastics replaced steel um, energy crisis meant that um, cars had to be more economic than big and heavy and powerful and uh, American automakers they missed out on that and uh, became beaten by the international competition and so what happened was that all of that beautiful steel turned to rust. And that started the downfall of uh, the U.S. manufacturing belt. So eventually the factories were shut down and uh, the places were abandoned and it all turned to rust. And that is why the area is now called the Rust Belt. <laughs> 